Hi, welcome to Focus on Hernando. Today my guests are Maureen Solomon and Beverly Riso with the Crescent Community Clinic and uh, they've come today to talk a little bit about the clinic and uh, the need that it fills in our community and some of the needs that it has as well. Um, so welcome ladies, Maureen, thanks for Hi, being good here. Good morning. Thanks and for Beth. Now you ladies are very, very involved in the Crescent Community Clinic and there's a lot to talk about because it, it is, has really become a driving force in Hernando County and it's getting bigger all the time and more well known and filling a greater need all the time. So Maureen, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what is the clinic? What, what does it do? Well, uh, the Crescent Community Clinic was founded by a um, Dr. Abu Zarad and some of his fellow physicians and he saw the great need in our county to give health care to people that didn't have insurance, low-income people. He had also been involved in a clinic in Los Angeles that reached out to the community and as part of his faith-based belief system he, he and his fellow Muslim physicians wanted to go ahead and open this clinic. Okay, so it was really a, a passion of theirs and it was yes. based on their religious beliefs that they give back to their community in, yes. in this way. When yes. was that? Um, uh, that was probably about three years ago. About 2008? About 2008 and they um, opened a clinic in Brooksville. Um, I think some of the founding physicians, Dr. Ju, Dr. Mamalji, I believe Dr. Uh, Ali was part of the group and there were several others mm -hmm. that really mobilized and set up this clinic. Um, they would see patients on the first three Saturdays of the month. It was open to anyone that came in. Um, there was no eligibility um, requirement at that point except that you be of a low income and you not have insurance. Okay. So you just really had to show you know, either a pay stub or your disability papers and a ID and you were seen at the clinic. Okay, I know it's definitely not a walk-in clinic, but it, when it first got started, is that what it was, more of a walk-in type of situation? Um, it was walk-in. You did not really need appointments at that time. Word of mouth, mm -hmm. I think, was the way people found out about it. And um, at that point, mostly the primary care illnesses were uh, hypertension, COPD, arthritis, uh, you had some heart disease and a, a lot of people with asthma were seen okay. and as the clinic grew and as the need grew more and more service, services were offered. Okay so that was three years ago when it was yes. first started and uh, it was started with a grant right? That's how you got the, the funding? To no, no at, th at that time it was started just with the physicians donations. Okay. The doctors all got together, chipped in and they, they basically funded the clinic. Okay. At now, that time. how has it changed over over the past 3 years? What how has it how is it different now than it was when it first started? Well, probably last uh, I would be, I would say last March, uh, Barbara Swineberg, who is a grant writer in the community and has been involved in not-for-profit organizations, was at a meeting of the Hernando Medical Alliance and she expressed an interest in um, helping the clinic there was a blue foundation grant available for hundred and fifty thousand dollars and she felt that she could go and apply for that grant and use the money to help the clinic with its needs okay. and one of the um, beginning volunteers Diane Rowden had spoken to Barbara about possible grant writing also uh, Dr. Zarad was available we went to see him and we went ahead and began the grant writing process Okay. And uh, what about the base of doctors that are volunteering with the clinic? Has that expanded a lot in the last three years? Well, no. what happened then is Barbara was very lucky to get the grant, um, and the grant changed somewhat. I had gone to Dr. Ackley, my dentist, and I am uh, friends with Beverly uh, Riso, his manager, and I basically told them about the needs in the community and that 
it seemed a lot of our patients were coming from the zip codes of Spring Hill. Mm -hmm. And it was our hope that we could open a satellite clinic in Spring Hill to help those people that couldn't get out to the Brooksville site. Uh, Beverly went and spoke to Dr. Ackley. He had some available office space in Winchester Plaza on 19. And um, just through the partnership of Dr. Ackley and his manager, and with Barbara applying for the grant, it got all um, you know, worked out that we were mm -hmm. able to get that grant, move the facility over to the Winchester Plaza and uh, open it up to dental, which okay. has never been available before. Okay, so when it first started three years ago, it was here in Brooksville. Yes. And then when you got the grant and you got the, uh, the space that was donated by Dr. Ackley, you moved it over to on US 19. Yes, because we needed a bigger facility to, to you know, put the dental and that's where the majority in. of your patients were coming yes, from. Yes, right? yes. And also, we did make arrangements. We decided that the heart bus was available if people needed to uh, come over from Brooksville. And then we were recruiting physicians so that we could extend the hours of service. Okay. All right. So, Beverly, you got involved when Maureen called you and said, <laughs> because of your longtime affiliation with Dr. Ackley being his manager, um, she came to you and asked if there was any way he could donate some office space right. to, to right. make it bigger for bigger space right Right. when Maureen asked we come calling and mm -hmm. she came and asked us that day and we see it every day in our office that there's such a need out in the community um, so I spoke to Dr. Ackley and he agreed that there definitely is a need and we need to start to give back to the community mm -hmm. in a different way so with Barbara's grant and with the space available, we were lucky enough to go into a 2,500 square foot building, which is absolutely, um, you know, how many, three times, almost three times the space of what was in Brooksville. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, we saw there is definite need for uh, patients to see dentists. Um, your, your overall health, your dental health is part of your overall health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, periodontal disease with uh, heart conditions and diabetes and all is integral. So we really, really need to, um, you know, see have patients with walking around with abscesses and toothaches and have never had their teeth cleaned. Um, so we know there's such a need and with people being out of work, they have no insurance, they have no resources to come to a dentist and have their immediate problems taken care of. Mm -hmm. So at that point we said we wanted to uh, see what we can do to get the dental part started. With some of the money that was left from the grant, we were able to purchase certain items to get the dental part started. Um, the dental is different than medical. Medical is more, uh, you know, x-rays outsourcing a lot of the, the uh, services. In the dental, we're working right there in the patient's mouth, so it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. We need supplies, we need you know, um, x-rays, we need bibs, we need, you know, masks, we need things like that that we use on the patient every single day. So we, we kind of uh, pulled our resources together and got the necessary stuff that we need to get the dental part. So how many dentists do you have participating now? Right now we have about seven dentists um, lined up. We've only started patients July 22nd. Dr. Ackley was the first dentist that um, volunteered mm -hmm. and um, it's slow going but we're starting to see progress um, it's you know trying to get the word out that we need the resources we need volunteers we need dentists we need hygienists we need assistants to come out and help fill that void now what dental services do you provide I know that you don't do everything so. right now what we're doing is we're doing um, palliative treatment emergency care um, we're doing a lot of extractions because people are coming in with teeth that are bombed out and there's no way that they can be saved. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our patients, like I said, have not seen a dentist for 10 years and have been walking around with such terrible toothaches. Mm -hmm. um, we see, we see, do see patients for a cleaning, debridements. Um, we, d we have seen patients, if we get a patient in there, that they feel that this tooth is not to the point where we have to extract the tooth. We will do fillings, um, not on every patient that just wants to come in and, and beautify their smile. We're there to serve a purpose. So instead of extracting a tooth that doesn't need to be extracted, we do do fillings. Okay.